you got there, little doll? No, it's called an action figure, <laughs> and it's Ben Franklin. Is this the classic tale where Ben Franklin takes a kite out into a storm, flies it, it gets hit by lightning, and a key that he's tied to the end gets charged, and he discovers electricity? Yeah, hey, I've heard that in every schoolroom I've ever been in. Because I've been in a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently there's a little bit of controversy surrounding it. They think, well, did he actually fly the kite? Was he able to get something in the air in a storm? Could he have done it without getting killed? What well, sounds really, really dangerous. It could be very dangerous. Or it could be a lot of fun. So what we've got to do is start out with the kite and see if we could build a kite that will fly using period materials with Benjamin Franklin's specifications. Definitely have to do some small scale testing on conductivity. Yes, just to see if the string can actually get that charge all the way down to the key. And then another problem I see is finding a storm, getting the kite in the storm and having it hit by lightning. Without killing all of us. Yeah, that seems like it's going to be a challenge. <laughs> Yeah. Let's start with building the kites. <laughs> hey Grant, could you want to make the little kite while I make the big kite? Sure. Stay up there. Stay up there. The next part of the myth is we have to measure the resistance of the string that we're going to use for this. And we have here the uh, high resistance meter. So I need a one inch sample of each type of string we're going to try. for a nano Siemens. Now check this out. There's a difference in conductance between these two pieces of string. And in fact, the thicker one has much higher conductance. If my keys were this big, I would never lose them. So our researchers have found that this key belongs to the most common lock that you might find in uh, Benjamin Franklin's days. So we're thinking this is the most likely candidate that we could use. I think she should definitely run with it. Okay. Go Carrie Byron. Run, Forrest! <laughs> You're almost there! Go! Go! <laughs> Go! <laughs> Stability appears to be an issue. I'm making some changes in the kite design. I'm taking advantage of the vagueness of Franklin's article and um, I'm changing from the square seater that we had before to a more flexible doweling. I'm also going to change from a perfect square um, to a more diamond shape, which is uh, traditionally what more you would think of a kite as looking like. My feeling is wood. 
because that's what they would have had back in the old days. All right, I think I found my window. We got one hour to uh, rip this thing apart and put a new window in. Okay, the bathroom's done. You know, I really think the Franklin family is gonna love these new additions we made to their house. Mm. Job well done. Nice! Here we are yet again trying to get a kite into the air. This is our biggest and our best kite. One, two, three. Eh, ah, ah, yeah! <laughs> we did it! Even on a dry day like today, we should be able to develop a static charge. And the reason is that the movement of the air, the wind, across the kite and the string should leave a net electrical charge. Do you want to get in the house and be all ready? You can be Ben Franklin, I'll bring it over to you. Okay, everything's all ready. All right, hey, we're getting three. 3.8 kilovolts. Wow. Get Four. Look at that. Six kilovolts. We are building. We're up to almost 10 kilovolts. No, no sparks. Now that we've gotten it in the air and we've got the copper rod at the end. <laughs> yep. Do you want to bring it down, wet it, and let it back up? Yeah, I think we should. Look how much more drag there is on the string this time. It's much heavier with all the water on it. The charge didn't seem to be building very quickly before, but it is now. Hold it steady. 16, 19, off the scale. You want to try the knuckle test? Definitely. Nothing. OK. We've gone to great pains to set up experiment to Franklin's original specifications in this controlled environment. And we're going to test under a variety of conditions, wet string, dry string, and what we're really after is what the effect is on the person who's holding the kite. What I hope is going to happen is that we're going to see something spectacular, that the lightning is going to strike that copper rod, travel down this string, hit the key, arc over to his finger, and then just light him on fire. OK, I'm going hot. Going hot. We're at 60,000 volts. 60,000 volts. 
400,000. It's actually kind of terrifying. <laughs> I'm kind of filled with a little dread here. Wow. <laughs> There's our lightning. So now we're going to start our second test, so we had to wet the string down, which hopefully will conduct the electricity a little bit better. This should be the main event. Really? Yeah. This is going to be it, huh? Bring her up. 300,000. Oh, it just burned the string. The voltage just increased enough to catch the string on fire. This is not something that I expected, actually. What's happening right now is we're pumping voltage through our string, and it's, it's catching on fire, obviously, we just saw. Is there a way that we can build a charge at the generator and then raise the kite into it so that it's an instant discharge? We're at 440,000 volts. We're going to go to 480. You ready? All right, should we send it? Should we send the kite in? I'm not seeing any triggers. It's hitting the ground. Oh, it's arcing to the ground. Shut her down. This time what we're going to do is we're going to raise that string up so it doesn't ground out and that we'll get that lightning strike that we're looking for. I never get tired of hearing that noise. 480,000. 480,000 volts. Should we send it up? Let's send it up. And there she goes. Up, up, and away. And it looks like you got enough to kill him. Yeah, look at that. Look it at that. Just <laughs> enough. Then wow. we'd be dead. Definitely dead. This is only a fraction of what a lightning bolt would be. We're, we're looking at just a tiny, tiny, tiny little lightning bolt here. And we fried Ben out. Could you imagine if it was a real storm and a real lightning bolt? There'd be no way he'd survive. He'd be dead. Smoke straight down the string, straight through his heart. All right, so when we started this myth, we stated that Ben Franklin going out, flying a kite in a storm, gets hit by lightning. That was the myth. He'd definitely get killed if he flew a kite in a lightning storm. I mean, we've definitely proven that. But, I mean, the experiment itself, that's pretty feasible. I mean, you can get electricity down a kite string. Not only is it feasible, we did it ourselves, and we got a shock off the key. Yeah, and that was on a dry day, not too cloudy. And we were still able to get that. The this experiment itself. Confirmed. Confirmed. Yeah, it's confirmed. But the, the myth is a story busted.